like to welcome everyone to the planning board hearing for Monday, March 22nd, 2021 for the town of Brookhaven. Will everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag, the flag of the United, the United States, States of America, America. and to the Republic, Republic for which, which it stands, stands. one nation, one nation. One nation. under God, God. God. indivisible, with liberty, liberty justice and justice, justice for all. For all. Before we begin, I'd like to say that if anyone is in the chat room who wants to speak on any of the items that are on the agenda this afternoon, please put your name next to the item number or agenda name so that council can be able to speak on that particular item. Okay, uh, at this time I'd like to have a roll call. Mr. Zarcon. Uh, present. Ms. Kelly. Ms. Kelly. She's Mr. muted. Valutis. Mr. Valutis? Here. Mr. Smith? Present. Ms. Dunn? Here. And Mr. Rose is absent with an excuse. I'm Vincent Pascal and present. I, Ms. We also have with us counsel to the planning board, Ms. Lee Rate. Commissioner of the Planning Department, Ms. Beth Riley, and Secretary of the Planning Board, Ms. Eileen McCallion. Ms. McCallion, are there any items on the agenda that will not be heard this afternoon? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Item number nine, American Region Expansion at Shirley is requested to be held until May 3rd. And also, um, also night, item number 11, Virginia Avenue at Ronkonkoma has requested to be held until April 5th. All right, thank you, Ms. McCallion. At this time, I'd like to start with item number one. It's a miscellaneous matter, public storage at Mount Sinai. Commissioner? Commissioner? Sorry. And number one, public storage at Mount Sinai. The application is for public storage at Mount Sinai, 508 Route 25A in Mount Sinai, on the southeast corner of Route 25A and Chestnut Street, zoned J2 business and A1 residential. It's 3.64 acres. The applicant is proposing to do a facade modification at the existing facility. They're proposing to paint the facility an orange color. The staff recommendations, there are five, last dated 3-19-2020, and the staff recommendation includes to refresh the painting scheme for white and beige to not approve the orange. Thank you, Commissioner. Counselor, is the applicant present? Yes, I'm, I'm asking um, Mark Soroka. Adam Tardiff. Okay, I don't see anybody coming into the meeting yet. Is Mark Soroka present? Okay. Mr. Yes, I yes, I put him into the meeting. Okay, Mr. Soroka, are you there? I am. Can you can you hear me? Yes, I can hear. I can also yeah, see. I'm you. sorry, but I don't know. It's, it's, right, please raise your right hand. You swear or affirm to tell it, Mr. Sorok? Yes, I'm here. Oh, I can't see you. Raise your right hand, please. Let me know when it's up. It's up, I raise my hand. Okay, do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth to help you God? Nothing but the truth. Yes, sir. Okay, okay so you'll represent this application. Do you wanna go over it with the public and the board? Why are you looking to change the elevation colors? Soroka. Council, do we lose him? He's in the meeting, Mr. Soroka. You want me to speak on behalf of public storage? Sure. Um, so public storage wants to change 
we would not be they would not be painting the uh, brick. It would just be one second, please hold on. Are you Mr. Soroka or Mr. Targ? I'm Mr. Tardif. I'm with Image National. Um, we're the sign company that's doing this signs for public storage. Okay, so you're Adam Targro? Tardif. Uh, can you raise your right hand, please? You swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. Okay, go ahead. Sorry to interrupt you. So in the middle where it has the picture or the, the depiction of the sign and public storage in the middle, that panel would be the only thing that's being painted on this side of the building. The rest of what you see would actually not be painted. I have a newer rendition if you'd like to see that. Well, we need to see the rendition as being proposed. We okay. That on Can I share my screen? I'm not mm -hmm. sure how that would work on the Zoom meeting. We could try. Commissioner, can you, is Matt there with you? We need Michelle to authorize it as the host. It says share at the bottom. I'm not sure if it'll let. Oh, nope. I have to. Hey, Beth, what are you looking to do? Can Mr. Tardif share his screen to show us an elevation? Yeah, you just have to stop sharing. Okay. Okay, just one second. Um, can you pick up my line, Matt? Can I what? I'm sorry, that wasn't for you. Oh. Are you, are you able to share? Yeah, just one second. Okay. Uh, Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, so we're proposing the orange would just be where the sign is here and over the door. So it would not be painting any of the masonry brick for this particular elevation. Hey, can I ask you a question? This is Richard Smith, board member. Sure. Why do you want to change the color? So public storage, is has national branding colors of orange um and that's their coloring um and we like to uh, they like to have these standards on all of their buildings um so the big bright orange is just a trademark that a national trademark that they use in order to um, have their customers identify their buildings i have a question for a commissioner um is it possible that this was approved when it was first constructed, approved with the more muted coloration for this particular location? Can you repeat that? I'm sorry, Mr. Smith. Is it possible that when this was originally approved um, by the planning board, that it was subject to the more muted colors for this particular location? Yes, this app the, the application that you see the existing is how it was approved. Um, now this site is currently located in the Route 25A Mount Sinai Hamlet Center Overlay District. And one of the objectives of that overlay district is to strengthen the Hamlet Center identity and attractiveness through imp improved corridor aesthetics, signage, streetscape, public spaces, design, and landscaping. So we wouldn't, that's why we're not recommending the orange. We're asking that it remain the same. We do recognize that they're going to be putting an orange sign, which they currently have. We're not saying no to that, although that would have to be wood carved, wood simulated pursuant to the staff recommendations. Um, but we we are not recommending the orange color for that reason. Thank you. Beth, can I ask you a question? This is board member Pete Zarcone. Was it proposed the last time for the orange and it was denied? That I don't know. I'd have to search our files for that. Okay, thank you. Council, is there anyone yet on a public one coming on this application? No, Mr. Chairman. Is there, any, is there anything else you'd like to add to this application, Mr. Tarba? Um, I was just going to show you the other elevation on the other side of the building. Again, just another a band of orange and then some orange over the door. 
Any other board members have questions, Ms. Tarboff? Yeah, I, I do. This is a uh, board member, Steve Willutis. Uh I don't quite understand. You want the public storage sign to be in orange, but how about the rest of that whole wall? Is that all orange now? No, it's beige. And you want to change that to orange or you don't want to? We do. The proposed is to change it to orange. The whole wall there, right? The whole wall, except the masonry. What's, what's depicted in the picture? You know, if you look at the top of the screen, Steve, it says existing, and then the proposed is turning it to arm. I see. I see. Okay. In Thank addition, you. In addition, this, this elevation that we're seeing, we, we've never seen before. We don't have this, but it is showing an internally illuminated sign, and the staff recommendation is not for that, to have wood carved wood simulated with gooseneck. To have wood carved what? Wood carved or wood simulated signs. As in addition to gooseneck lighting, that's in the staff recommendations, last dated 319 2021. Have you seen those? I have not seen that. Okay, so I can share them on the screen, but I need you to stop sharing. Yeah, read item number two when you get a chance when it comes up. Okay. Wood carved or similar signage with direct lighting. So could you explain direct lighting? Gooseneck lighting, commonly known as gooseneck. Not, okay. not rear lit. Like I said, this is in the 25A Hamlet Center overlay district and there are guidelines for that. Is this online? Is what online? Is this picture that you're showing me or this screenshot you're sharing? This is, yes, this is currently on our agenda. Okay. So today only is the paint, but the the signs, are, are they also being considered today? Our staff recommendations address them because they were on your elevations. That's part okay. of your facade. Okay, well, I, I wasn't, that wasn't made clear to me until now. Okay. So do we need to go through each sign or just the ones that have all paint signs, on? All signs that are proposed to be changed would need to comply. All signage shall be applied with the building division and comply with the wood carved and direct lighting. Uh, Mark Soroka is wanting to join the, the conversation. Uh, Mr. Yes, Mr. Chairman, I have, um, it's under Harley Spratt. All right, is, is it public or the applicant? He's part of the applicant. Okay. Hello. Uh, can you raise your right hand, Soroka? I'm Mr. Harley Spratt. But uh, you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? Yes. Okay. What did you want to add to the uh, meeting? Yeah, I do want to add uh, a little bit. So um, the design that Adam was just sharing with you did actually show um, non-illuminated signs with gooseneck, uh, with gooseneck lighting over the top of it. So I think that might have been misunderstood. That that sign was not internally eliminated that we were proposing. That's what the plan said that he um showing. You're saying what we're looking at is in what you're proposing. I so what you have shown here is not what we're proposing. Yes, well, see right there, you have goosenecks. That's this is a rendering that we created. Um, or that public storage had requested for the paint. So we had uh, created a design in order to capture their request. Um, in that request, we had just, we had received information from them that they had not, they do not, no longer want to do brick painted, uh, but they do still want to do the orange band. I understand that that's not something that will be acceptable and we can readjust from there. But what I would like to speak about is the um, wood, um typical kind of wood look for the back of the sign we have tried to incorporate that in our signage 
and the gooseneck signage, we have also tried to incorporate that. Our signs are not internally illuminated that we're proposing. This one, that this is Richard Smith again. This particular sign that you're showing looks like just something painted right on the wall of the building. And, and it's, fairly large too. This rendering is, is a paint only scheme plan here. So this is a very, very... Um, it's a rough draft. It's a very rough draft, yeah. So it's it's very preliminary. The design that I would like to show is the design that Adam had previously um, tried to share. And I think there was some confusion about if it was internally illuminated as it's it's very clearly listed as externally illuminated. Do you have those plans now? I do. Uh, is this something we can share a screen or you just want to hold this to the next meeting so you can submit? No, I, I, if I could share my screen, I would love to do that. We can, but our staff hasn't reviewed it and our recommendations aren't, to... aren't written for a plan that we don't have yet. Okay, so I'd like to hold this open to a certain date so that we can review the new plans that are being presented. Council? Yeah. Yes, that's that's fine. Okay. I believe that the, the plans that we have sent, I'm not sure, if, I guess we have sent them in, but I'm not sure if they've been sent to the right people, I guess. Well, we what we're looking at is what the board has received in our packet. So if we're going to okay. look at new elevations, depicting different signage types with the uh, gooseneck lighting, that's something that has to be submitted. I think Mr. Schroeder is... <clears throat> The reviewer on this application if you can make sure he gets this we'll hold this open to the next date I, well i would like to say that in the rendering that you were just looking at it does not indicate anywhere on that rendering that it's externally illuminated it actually does show the goose gooseneck illumination so that would indicate that it's an external illumination so that might be um, something that you could advise on right now i mean is that acceptable i understand the paint is not acceptable but the external illumination that we have shown. So okay, you when is the next board meeting? April 5th. April 6th? April 5th. 5th. Okay. Can I have a motion to hold this here and open to April 5th, the date certain? Mr. Chairman, this is uh, Steve Willotis. I make a motion to hold this application open until April 5th for the next board meeting. Okay, have a second, please. The chairman, board member Pete Zarcon, I'll second that motion. Ms. Kelly. Ms. Kelly. You muted, Ms. Kelly. No, no, why? Sorry, I, I vote aye. Okay, Mr. Ro uh, uh, Mr. Smith. Aye. Ms. Dunn. Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries six. So uh, if you can submit those elevations as soon as possible so it can be reviewed for the April 6th, April 5th meeting, that would be wonderful. Okay. Mr. Spratt. Mr. Chairman, I'm just having some tough difficulty with the technology right now. I just need a minute um, to get the agenda back up, okay? Okay. Let us know when you're ready, Commissioner. Mr. Chairman, can I take this moment to remind everyone who's in the queue? I have um, no one has really responded. So if you're in the queue and you'd like to speak, please in the chat or the QA function, let me know what application you're here for. And um, if you're from the public or you represent the applicant. Thank you. Are we ready? Okay, I'm waiting for the commissioner.
Okay, I'm sorry about that. Okay, oh, sorry about that. Okay, all right, we're ready to move on item number two. Okay, item number two is also miscellaneous matter, Westry Funeral Home at Ten Marches. Application is located at 495 Main Street in Santa Mariches, 300 feet west of Chichester Avenue. It's zone J business is 1.31 acres in size. The application is to modify the previously approved plan for a 2,864 square foot one story addition to the existing funeral home, including a parking lot expansion. There are four staff recommendations, last dated 3 2 21. Council, is the applicant present? Yes. I'm Matthew Elwood with RM Engineering in Huntington on behalf of the owner and the applicant. What's the last name? Elward, A Y L W A R D. Uh, Mr. Elwood, can you raise your right hand, please? You swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, the application for the board? Uh, the application uh, for West Funeral Home was the uh, in May of 2019. The application was before the planning board received conditional approval uh, and then eventually uh, received final approval and they pulled, built, uh, pulled their building permit. Uh, at the time that they pulled the permit, they went to construction and they found that the fees were a little bit higher or the cost of construction was higher than what they anticipated. So they started to value engineer some things. And while they were doing that, they saw some issues on the site that they would like to rectify to make things a little bit cheaper, make things actually even a little bit nicer uh, in terms of curb appeal from the uh, from Montauk Highway. So there were seven items that they modified, uh, moving some parking around, changing some land banked areas, paving some land banked areas. Um, if I could share my screen, I could I could walk everybody through it. Is that possible? Should be able to. Uh, I have the site plan up. OK, there was there was one that I actually um, had this. I highlighted seven areas where we made the changes. But. Uh, Either way. So just to continue on, the um, oh, maybe we got it. While we're waiting for the screen to come up, have you received a copy of the staff recommendations? No, I haven't. Okay, we'll put them up after we review the site plan. Okay. Okay. It just takes a very long time for these documents to load because they're so large. Sure. Do you know what page it's on? It was called the red line plan. It was in the um, it was part of the uh, information that was listed on the website. Okay, hold on. It's going to take me some time to load it. That's sure. But the, the changes really we found made uh, made it really much much nicer of a, of, a, of a view from Montauk Highway. You know, it moved some of the parking further to behind the building instead of on the west side of the building. And we feel that it really kind of enhances the property through those changes. I can't get to it. Okay, I'll try, I'll try to, uh, I'll go through. So on the west side of the building, um, between the building and the school, the, we previously had seven parking spots parallel to the curb line there. And what we found was by the view from Montauk Highway, if we could move those parking spots to the back, maybe land bank some of them, then you wouldn't see the parking, you know, straight off of, of Main Street. So we shifted them into the back and to the north. And we cleared a little bit more into uh, the adjacent area along the school. Uh, that area was previously land banked. Now we're just going to pave those. Uh, if you look to the uh, south, I'm sorry, be the west, northwest corner, uh, we're trying to save a tree. So we're going to land bank a stall there in that little island. Uh, the next thing was we were taking off a section of the garage. Uh, there was an addition put on the back of the garage some time ago. Uh, the applicant and the owner found that they didn't really need all that space in that detached garage. So they took the back piece off, the back half off uh, and, and provided three parking stalls in that area. And then also, I think one of the last things was the awning. They had an awning off the front of the building, which they decided to, to take off as well. The, the, the parking stalls that were on the west boundary there, were they part of the handicapped parking? Was that moved to the rear where those two spots are now? Was that relocated? Yeah, the handicap, right. So we found that was, that was I forgot to mention that. Um, looking at the previous plan, there was like a C handicap uh, ramp that would get us up into the first floor. And we found that it was tough because 
people would have to walk around that in the drive aisle to get to the front door. So we realigned it so that it was along the building wall and it came down. And in order to do that, we had to push the handicap stalls to the other side of the drive aisle. Right? But what it does is it provides this better uh, circulation for all people walking into the main entrance because now they have a sidewalk to walk on to get to the front door as opposed to just walking in that drive aisle. Council, is there anyone in the public on this application? No, Mr. Chairman. Is any board, uh, did you get an opportunity to look at those recommendations? They were on the screen briefly. Commissioner, can you put them back up so the applicant review the, the recommendations? Mr. Chairman, do you need me to move anything else on the screen for you? I'm sorry. Yeah, I wanted to see the staff recommendations so the applicant can review them. I'm sorry, we just have this new system, so I'm trying to learn it as we go here. Uh, okay. Okay, Ms. Dowd, can you see those? Yes. Okay. You have any questions on those four items? No, not at all. Okay, and no questions by the board. I have a motion, please. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to close this public hearing and place the matter on the decision calendar. Motion to close by Ms. Dunn. Second, Richard Smith. Second, Mr. Smith. Mr. Zarcon. I vote aye. Ms. Kelly. I vote aye. Mr. Aludis. I vote aye. The chair votes aye. Motion carries 6 0. Thank you, Ms. Elwood. Thank you very much. Item number three is also miscellaneous matter, Lou Toritos at Santa Mauritius. The application is for Lou Toritos at Santa Mauritius, located at 177 Montauk Highway in Santa Mauritius. It's split zone J Business 2 and A Residence 1 and is 0.653 acres in size. The application is to modify a previous approved uh, site plan for an addition to the restaurant. There are six staff recommendations, last dated 2 11 21. Thank you, Commissioner Council. Is the applicant present? Yes, just a moment. All right, go, go ahead. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and rest of the board. My name is Stephen Kiley, PO Box 567, Mattatuck, New York, 11952. Somebody say something? Now, can you, you're an attorney, correct? Yes. Okay, Mr. Kiley. Thank you. Uh, I'm the attorney for uh, Mark Lamena, owner of Lucharitos, the applicant. I'm here today to address some discrepancies between the approved site plan and what is on the ground. First, the siding. Uh, the siding on the addition differs from the original building. And this is because that the particular siding uh, that was on the original building uh, no longer exists. Hold on one second. It's asking me, there we go. Um, my client used a half inch by six beveled edge clear cedar instead and it was stained with two coats of Benjamin Moore exterior solid stain. Second item is the awning. Uh, the awning was on the original building and we just carried it over when we put on the addition. Third, the patio. There was an existing patio which was located where the new addition is. So it was originally underneath the footprint of the addition and we just shifted it east in kind. For uh, sconce lighting, uh, we installed lighting for safety reasons uh, for the ramp on the south side of the building and on the east for the walkway and patio. Uh, fifth, the roof sign. Uh, Nettie's, the original bakery that was uh, running out of the subject site, had an identical sign in this particular location and we just replaced it in kind. 
same size, same coloration. We spoke to HDAC about it. Uh, they seemed fine. Uh, the number six, the double tool fence. Uh, this is a bamboo fence, which was installed to screen the compressor in order to beautify the property. Number seven, the rooftop deck. This was installed at the behest of the fire marshal for health and safety purposes. Um, my client worked directly with the fire marshal on the design and subsequently constructed it. And it was only thereafter that we found out that we may need approvals for it. Uh, number eight, the shutters. Uh, shutters were installed uh, surrounding the south side addition window. Um, the contractor neglected to put them on and we have rectified that situation. Uh, number nine, windows. Uh, in the original building, they're four by four uh, windows and inadvertently they were not utilized for the addition. Um, if the board requires, we can modify uh, the one by one windows to four by four. Um, if memory serves me right, the HTC didn't have a major issue with that. Um, outdoor seating, uh, we removed all of the outdoor seating from the A1 residential zone portion of the property. Um, then there's two last items, uh, is the 16 by 20 forum stand. Uh, we would like to submit a change of use application in the future, changing that building into retail. And uh, lastly, there's an outdoor bar area with the roof over. We already removed the roof, uh, but it's located to the east of the detached kitchen. And similarly, we would like to submit a change of use application in the future to use that space. Uh, we will not use either space until we get the necessary approvals. So you're going to come back with a change of use application on this site? Is that what I heard? I'm sorry, sir, could you repeat yourself? I, I, thought I, I thought I heard you say you were going to come back with a change of use application. Uh, that, that's what uh, Mr. Schroeder suggested I do as far as the, if we wanted to utilize the farm stand for anything else other than a farm stand, we'd have to come back to see you. And uh, also with the outdoor bar that again was pre-existing on the site because uh, it adjoined, uh, if you could see the kitchen, it says former bakery on the uh, west side of the property. Um, we'd like to just use that and continue to use it. Um, but again, I think that would necessitate, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but another change of use application or an amendment to the site plan application. Have you received a copy of the staff recommendations? Uh, yes, sir. I pulled it off the uh, website. Okay. Council, is anyone in the public on this application? No, Mr. Chairman. There was also a roof sign that needed to come down. Yeah, I referenced that earlier. So that was the old Netty sign. Um, that was there when we purchased the property. Um, and I'm not sure if it had approvals, but the HGAC remembered it and they have no problem with the sign. Um, originally, my guy took uh, artistic license and, and put a larger sign uh, than that Netty's original. We removed it and brought it back to the same specs of the Netty sign with the same colors. Um, and the HGAC was fine with it. And, uh, you know, arguably, I okay. think it could be considered a wall sign in my reading of the uh, definitions, but, you know. That... Well, we, it was to come down. It was not approved by Netty when it was up by Netty's and it's a roof sign. So in order to keep that sign, it would need to go to the BZA and that sign was supposed to be down. Um, I I was working directly with the HDAC at the time and they said I could, you know, well, put it back up so long as it was, uh, you know, in the same, not, with the same specs as Nettie's. We like did I not said, find a permit for that sign, just to advise you. Okay, that's fine. Uh, it was just our understanding that it was legal. If it's not, that's, yeah, absolutely. We'll have to uh, address that. Any board members have questions? I have a question, Mr. Chairman. This is Richard Smith. The the roof the, the roof deck is is that a deck where people are going to go up and, and do dining? <laughs> no 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 no. The the roof deck is just if anybody needs to work on the exhaust equipment, uh, it's for worker safety. And again, we didn't. It wasn't in our wildest dreams that we would have to build it. It was the fire marshal who came and told us we had to. 
um, there, there are requirements for a parapet for that sort of thing, not necessarily a, a deck, but so there's yeah. no, going to be no dining up there. Oh, no, 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 absolutely. No public up there whatsoever. No employees, only people that contractors that come to fix the exhaust system. It's just a parapet for the safety of people who work on the roof. Absolutely. There will be zero public employee use of that space. Thank you. You're welcome. Sir. Any other questions by the board? May I have a motion, please? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to close this public hearing and place the matter on the decision calendar. Motion to close by Ms. Dunn. Second, Richard Second. Smith. Second by Mr. Smith. Mr. Zarcon. I vote aye. Ms. Kelly. I vote aye. Mr. Walutis. I vote aye. The chair votes aye. Motion carries 6 0. Thank you. Thank you very much, board. Item number four is a miscellaneous matter, 1110 Halleck Avenue, SVA Realty at Fort Jeff Station. 1110 Halleck Avenue, Port Jefferson Station is located in a J business two zone and is 0.524 acres. The request is to eliminate a basement from an approved 250 square foot addition. There are five staff recommendations, last dated um, Three, two, is there anyone from the public who wishes to speak on this application? I don't have anyone who responded for number four. Is the applicant present, Councilor? No. I have the name uh, Eric Nicosia and Robert Polina as our applicants on this one. They're not in the, in the chat room yet, Councilor? No, I don't have them in the in the queue. I'll come back to application. Item number five, Burger King, North Ocean Avenue, West Block Road in Farmingdale, uh, Farmingville. Located at 2250 North Ocean Avenue in Farmingville, 651 feet south of Horse Block Road. It's owned J Business 2 and is 0.99 acres in size. The application is for a facade change. There are eight staff recommendations, last dated 310-21. Thank you, Commissioner. Council, the applicant present? No, I don't have anyone who signed in for number five. Um, there are certain, some people have not responded. So if I there's have, anyone here for number five. I have Pete Ricardo on this one, Lee. Is Ricardo available yet? Did you have who on the application? Pete Ricardo. A Pete and a Peter in the queue. I don't, I don't know which one that would be if it's either one. Someone can message me. I haven't received any message for number five. I also haven't received a message for number 11, Virginia Avenue. All right, we'll come back to that too. Virginia, oh, Avenue being adjourned. Yeah, yes. just, oh, okay. Just a moment. Um, I have someone coming in now. The Burger King? Yes. And now they're gone. I think you, we have to come back to this, Mr. Chairman. They were there and I let them in and now it's gone. That link is we'll gone. Come back to that one. Item number six, Church of St. Rod Mahalia. The application is located at 300 and 316 Terryville Road in Port Jefferson Station on the west side of Terryville Road. 1,324 feet south of Nesconset Highway. The application is for revised architectural plans for new windows facing Terryville Road. The previously approved site plan for the proposed construction of a parish, parish center addition, existing thrift shop and associated site improvements. There are two staff recommendations, last dated 310-21. Thank you, Commissioner. 
Commissioner. Councilor, is the applicant present? Uh, yes. What? Um. Mr. Chairman, it's uh, Father Greg Renanzisi, the pastor of St. Gerard's. Good afternoon, Pastor. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Oh, okay. Have you received a copy of the staff recommendations? Uh, but the architect, uh, Rob Peterson from Core Group, is also on this call. Um, can everybody hear me okay? Uh, I can hear you, Mr. Mr. Chairman. I did not receive uh, any uh, recommendations from the staff. Okay, we'll put them up in the meantime. Can you raise your right hand? You swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, these are the staff recommendations. Only two of them are last revised on March 10th. Okay. So if I may, Mr. Chairman, or? Yes. Okay, so I uh, just wanna thank the board for this opportunity to uh, be with you again. I've appeared twice before. Uh, last time was uh, last year, February 4th of 19. Um, and today we're seeking a, an amendment to the approved site plan from that day uh, to have three new windows um, installed in, uh, in between the two existing windows on the east side, uh, the east wall that faces Terryville Road. Um, and as you probably likely know from the documentation um, that you had before um, this meeting, uh, we received positive endorsements from the Historical District Advisory Committee and the Port Jeff Station Terryville Civic Association. So our hope is in uh, beautifying the interior um, will also um, help the, uh, the view from the uh, street on Terryville Road. Okay, well, it looks good. Uh, is there anyone in the public who want to speak on this, uh, Council? Chairman? No. No. Okay. Any board members have questions? Seeing none, we have a motion. Mr. Chairman, make a motion to close this public hearing and place the matter on the decision calendar. Motion is closed by Mr. Smith. Second that motion. Second by Ms. Dunn. Mr. Zarcon. I vote aye. Ms. Kelly. I vote aye. Mr. Walutis. I vote aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries 6 0. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Did uh, anyone come in for item number four or five yet, Council? I have number five. Okay. Um, let me see yeah. if, there, if I can figure it out. I'm having some technical difficulties. Lee, we're doing Burger King? Yes. yes. Okay. So I think I have the architect in. For Burger King. I don't see anyone yet. There, I have their um, the, them in the meeting, but it's not coming on, and I don't know why. All right, do you want to go to number seven while I'm trying to figure it out? Okay. I'm number seven, Colonial Youth at Mastic. It's located at 176 Madison Street in Mastic. Zone J business is 0.99 acres. The application is to convert a former Knights of Columbus to a daycare facility. There are 10 staff recommendations, last dated 3-22-21. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm showing nine, but maybe I don't have the updated. Mine's updated March 16th. So if you could put those up. Is the applicant present, Councilor? Yes, I have Mr. Toll. Okay, you want to bring the applicant in? He's in. Yeah. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Can you please raise your right hand? Yes, Mr. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? 
Yes, I do, Mr. Chairman. Okay, you want to go over the application for the board? Sure, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my name is Fred Toll from East Coast Marketing. I'm representing the applicant, which in this instance is the Knights of Columbus and Colonial Youth, which is a family and service uh, nonprofit organization based out of the Mastic Shirley area. With us today on the phone is Bob Rettenauer and Rick Wiedersome, our two architects that have worked on the site plan at this location. Colonial Youth uh, is a 40 plus year organization in the area. They're located at a property in Mariches. That property has now been acquired by the community library. The library is renovating the building over the next 18 months. So Colonial became homeless. Um, the Knights of Columbus stepped up to allow Colonial to use their hall to run their daycare operations out of, uh, to seek uh, state approval to do that. We had to deal with some matters that existed on the building one of which was amending and resolving the site plan, which is what we're here before you today, uh, doing some parking and drainage improvements uh, to the site that would allow the site to be more conducive for the purpose of the daycare facility. Okay. Have you received a copy of the staff recommendations? No, I have not. Uh, okay, they're on the screen now, Mr. Toll. Can you review those? Yeah, the it, two items that are just quickly standing out, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Uh, one is, number one, the last plan was submitted by Mr. Rettenauer uh, earlier this month. So that would actually have been the last plan that the town received in March of 2021. And we had indicated there was going to be a need for some highway work uh, with some changes or adjustments to the driveway. Uh, that does not need to be done, at least from our point of view at this point. So we would not need any highway work. That would be the only two things that jump out at me looking at this quickly. I think, can you ad address that? I don't know why they wouldn't need a highway work permit if they're doing curbs or something. We, no, the curbs, are, yeah, the curbs are already existing. There was some discussion of readjusting the driveway or the apron, if you would. There's an apron on the east and north side of the property, but it turns out those aprons don't have to be adjusted. So that would have been the cause of the highway work. The curbing and sidewalk is already there. In fact, the curbing and sidewalk at that site had been bummed by the town of Brookhaven 20 years ago. Who, who made the uh, opinion that it didn't have to be adjusted on the north side, the ingress egress? Originally, when we put together the site plan, we thought we were going to have to adjust it because of where the parking lot was being laid out. But in the final rendering that Mr. Rettenauer submitted, we're of the thought that it does not have to be changed at the moment. And obviously, no one from the town has told us anything contrary to that. We were suggesting it had to be moved, and now we're no longer suggesting that. Okay, so that's what's being depicted on the site plan. That we're Correct. At. Correct. And, and in, the, in the end of the day, it's a temporary app, uh, applicant in that they'll be in the building for approximately 18 months. Ultimately, we'll look to return the hall back to the KFC hall. It's not going to be a permanent fixture. They're going to be there for approximately 18 months. Okay. And there's still a town board covenant on this particular parcel? Uh, it was removed by the town board in January and the covenants and restriction paperwork is being prepared now to be filed. I imagine that'll be sometime in the next three to four weeks uh, for that to be done. The fire marshal's office is being scheduled to come out and do their final inspection on the building. And then the state would come out to do their final inspection. The town through Councilman Panico's office has been very gracious to help Colonial find a temporary home while we're doing this application and they're currently occupied out of the Mastic Rec Center and they're paying the town rent for that. That arrangement is due to come to an end in mid-April. So we're hopeful if everything goes well today with this hearing and we can get the rest of our paperwork in on time, that ultimately sometime in the next 30 to 60 days, Colonial will be actually able to move into the Knights of Columbus Hall and end this uh, saga. Council, is there anyone in the public wish to speak on this application? No, Mr. Chairman. 
any board members have questions for the applicant? Just one question. Um, most daycare centers require a, a playground for the kids because this is temporary, you're not doing it or is there one that I'm not seeing here? It's gonna be a very small moving of a few pieces of playground equipment um, to the Knights of Columbus property. Some of the items are those seahorse type rides and things of that nature. And there'll be a few pieces of that equipment moved to the site and then ultimately moved back to Mariches when Colonial returns to its permanent home. And, and that's going to be in a fenced area? Uh, the whole property now is fenced as it currently exists. And I believe we had originally depicted that on the west grass side of the uh, site. Uh, most of the property is grass or RCA as it exists with the exception of building. Um, I'm not sure which direction. Oh, actually, the west side or the or the north side? West side, I believe. Bob or Rick, are you on the line? I think I might have lost All my right. <laughs> Now, um, I think he's just, I'll let him in. Hold on. Great. As I said, it's a few pieces of equipment as they're joining us. So it's actually at the northwest corner that you're talking about that grass area. Yeah, I, okay. I think probably mid mid north south actually more, but close enough. It is that side. Okay. And we obviously will meet the setback requirements. There's a woods to the west side of the property, but we'll obviously conform with the setback requirement. It's a pretty good sized piece of property. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. No problem. I, I, I have the architect in the meeting if you wanted to speak. Yeah, I think we addressed it, but if they have anything to add, they can jump in. Any other questions by the board? Seeing none, we have a motion. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to close this public hearing and place the matter on the decision calendar. Motion closed by Ms. Dunn. Second, Richard Smith. Second, by Mr. Smith. Mr. Zarcone. I vote aye. Mr. Kelly. I vote aye. Mr. Walutis. I vote aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries six zero. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and the members of the board. We appreciate your help and consideration. Item number eight is a change of use with a variance. It's McDonald Corporation in Manorville. The application is located at 5, 560 County Road 111, 250 feet west of Chapman Boulevard in Manorville. Property is owned J Business 2 and is 0.623 acres in size. The proposal is the addition of a side-by-side -side drive through facade renovation and ADA, ADA upgrades requiring a parking variance. There are 11 staff recommendations, one planning board variance for amount of parking in a commercial center, and the staff recommendations are last dated 3-2-21. Thank you, Commissioner. Council, is the applicant present? Yes, yes I am. Sir. Can you all hear me? I can hear you. Is it Mr. Brown? Yes, it is, Mr. Chairman. How are you today? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing well. I like. Is How is the planning commissioner too? How is she doing? Always the best. <laughs> she won't say that, but I will. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll be brief. It's a very straightforward application. Um, you'll no, no, know no. it is. This is the McDonald's located on County Route 111 on the west side. Uh, that's attached to the uh, King Cullen Shopping Center. I can only see the chairman um, in the upper right, which is fine by me. I just don't know if the board members uh, can see the site plan in front of them. Yes, they can. Yes. Okay, very good. So um, good afternoon, Chairman Pascal, members of the planning board, Keith Brown, Brown, Allman, Valeo, LLP, located 538 Broad Hollow Road, 3301 West, Melville, New York, 11747. Thank you for the opportunity to make this presentation. I'm here today with respect to McDonald's application for one, a change of use to remodel the facade of the existing restaurant and add a side-by-side -side drive through Two, to make ADA site improvements. And three, as part of the overall uh, site improvements, the uh, McDonald's requested parking variance to reduce the overall shopping center's parking count um, by only three, three stalls, okay? The existing parking count for the center is 346. There's a prior variance granted from 455 
and we're taking that 346 and just lowering it by three stalls uh, for 343. I would like to also point out, and I'm stealing some of the thunder of our traffic expert, um, but if this McDonald's was a standalone restaurant with a drive through it would uh, meet the code's criteria for parking. Okay. As a matter of housekeeping, the public notice posting and all mailings for the hearing were performed in accordance with the town code and have been submitted to the town prior to this afternoon's hearing. Uh, with me today is Mr. Marty Swaggart, uh, PE from Core States Group, the project civil engineer, Patrick Blease, RA from Core States, the project architect, and Mr. Ethan Chikoski, PE from Atlantic Traffic and Design, our traffic engineer. Uh, in advance of the hearing, McDonald's has provided the board with the following documents in support of the application. I should also, I'm sorry, I should also point out that my associate, uh, Matthew Ingber, is also on the line. In advance of the hearing, McDonald's provided the following documents in support of the application, an aerial photograph of the property, an aerial photograph of the shopping center, the site plan you see before you, a color rendering, and a traffic report prepared by Atlantic Traffic and Design. As previously noted, the applicant is seeking to approve the McDonald's site by making ADA upgrades, installing a side-by-side -side drive through and updating the facade. The existing restaurant has been there since circa 1994. It's located on the south side, uh, actually make that the west side of County Route 111 as part of the Manorville Town Shopping Center and surrounded by other businesses and commercial uses. Uh, to the north across Route 111 is, is an Italian restaurant and undeveloped uh, vacant land. To the east of the property is a 7-Eleven. I think that's the south, excuse me, is uh, followed by undeveloped naturally vegetated land. Uh, to the west is undeveloped wooded area, followed by the shopping center, inclusive CVS, a restaurant, and a Wendy's as well. And the property immediate uh, adjacent consists of approximately 14 acres, which includes the Federal Credit Union, the King Cullen, and a number of other commercial businesses. The purpose of the application is to improve the efficiency of the restaurant by adding the side-by-side -side drive through improve the architectural appearance of the restaurant, and make much-needed uh, ADA upgrades. We Re respectfully submit that the balance of uh, the area, area variance factors favor the applicant with respect to the parking. Um, I know this board is familiar with those standards, so there's no need for me to go through them. Um, in terms of the character of the neighborhood, the benefit to the applicant, the size of the variance, and environmental conditions and self-created hardship all favor the granting of this application. Um, with that said, um, if the board has any questions for the civil eng uh, engineer, Marty Swaggart, uh, he could go first, followed by the architect, and last, the traffic engineer. Dr. Brown, have you received a copy of the staff recommendations? I, I did, not, and we have no objections with them. Okay. All right. Uh, is there any the public on this, Councilor Wright? No, Mr. Chairman. Any board members have questions? Mr. Chairman, this Chair is Richard Smith. I just like a quick question on how this side by side um, uh, drive drive through works. Sure. Uh, I'll just before I bring on uh, Ethan Chikoski to explain it. You're most familiar with the side-by-side -side on uh, North Ocean Avenue in Farmingville, uh, just south of Town Hall on the uh, on the east side no, of the no, roadway. I'm, no, I'm not. That's why I'm asking you how this it's works. Also similar to the one in Santa Maria's. Right, right. Okay, so with that, Ethan, you want to uh, explain as it relates to the site plan how the side-by-side -side will work? Sure. Uh, this is Ethan Chikoski. Uh, I'm at um, with Atlantic Traffic and Design. I'm at 2929 Expressway Drive North, Hoffog, New York. Right. Can you raise your right hand, please? Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you God? I do. Okay, go ahead. All right. So this is a, a, a very popular application, side-by-side -side drive through uh, You'll see them more and more with, with any fast food restaurant, but especially McDonald's. Um, you know, over the years, McDonald's has seen a large proportion of the drive through traffic really shift um, from the dine-in traffic, and especially on, on a commuter route. Um, in addition, the menu has expanded, you know, with Mac make cafe options, all-day breakfast, you know, customers have a lot more choices. So they found when, when they did their research that, that really the choke point of the ordering process and a drive through is, is the ordering, um, not the pickup and 
the, the payment window. You know, it takes about twice as long to order than it does to pay, pay and pick up. So the side-by-side -side drive through operates by allowing um, two orders to be taken at once. Uh, McDonald's, you know, has put a lot of research into carefully designing the side-by-side -side drive through and, and developed several typical layouts that specify the radii, dimensions, positions of the equipment. Um, it works by taking a photo of the license plate and, and vehicle at, you know, at the ordering point so that they can track each order as they go through the drive through So, you know, picture you're in a drive through line and, you know, a big minivan with, with a bunch of kids and, you know, a long, complicated order. What the, the, the side by side allows is for that order to be taken on one side and then the quicker orders to be taken on the other. And, and what it does is it's, um, by re alleviating that cho choke point, it lets, um, it reduces the amount of queuing that would possibly extend. So basically just simply said, you have a double line where you can order from either side of that line and then it converges back into a single line. Correct, yeah. Okay, all right, thank you. Any questions by the board? May I have a motion please? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to close this public hearing and place the matter on the decision calendar. Motion to close by Ms. Dunn. Second, Richard Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith, Mr. Zarcon. I vote aye. Ms. Kelly. I vote aye. Mr. Walutis. I vote aye. Okay, I vote aye. Motion carries 6 0. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you all. Stay safe. Take care. You too. Okay, item Bye -bye. nine American region expansion referral is being held on May 3rd. Item number 10, Michael J. Grant Funeral Home Expansion at Quorum. The application is located at 3640 Route 112 in Quorum. It's zone J business two and is 0.914 acres. The proposal is to construct a one-story addition to the 1,518 square foot building with a 394 square foot basement. There are 10 staff recommendations and two planning board variances. Actually, I think it's down to one. Thank you, Mr. Council. Is the applicant present? I'm yes, sorry. Let me just, I just have, a, we have an updated staff report. I'm sorry. We have okay. eight staff recommendations with one uh, planning board variance and it's last revised March 17th, 2021. Okay. Council? Uh, yes, Mr. Volmuth is here. You're muted, Jeff. Mr. Well, Volmo, are you there? There you go. Okay, now I'm unmuted, right? All right. Um, good afternoon. My name is Jeff Volmuth. I am Jeff, the. Can you raise um, your right hand, please? Sybil. You swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so you guys? I do. Okay. Good afternoon. I'm the uh, civil uh, in, civil engineer on this project, Volmuth and Brush, um, 200 Blue Point Avenue, Blue Point, New York. Um, we're also the surveyors on this project. Uh, Michael Grant currently operates a funeral home at this site, and he's proposing an enlargement of the viewing rooms and improvements to the ADA access and parking areas on the site. Um, also, he's proposing a full exterior renovation of the facade um, and quite a bit of landscaping. The project was reviewed previously twice, 2002 and 2008 by the planning board. This version of the site plan is essentially very similar to the 2008 site plan that was previously approved. Um, with the exceptions of we have changed street trees, we've added some hedge plantings around the edge of the um, parking lot. And those are the major changes that we're asking for a, um, the loading space to be land banked, which is at the, can I, I don't know if you, oh, can you see me moving my cursor? I think, I hope, yes. Um, at the northeast corner. If you look, you can see the existing line of the parking lot. You can see. Um, we're providing a, a total of 40 spaces, which is to code. Um, not too much else to really talk about. Storm drainage to code. And the existing um, entrances are the way they are now. 
um, where the gross square footage is changing from 5,163 to 6,448 with the major change happening on the first floor where there will be two, the exist, one of the existing viewing rooms will be enlarged and uh, basically a new brand new viewing room. So a total of two viewing rooms in the uh, building. Was, was there an inspection on the parking lot? Was that something that had to be done or is it? Um, actually what the uh, engineering division has, is requiring, um, I believe it's down in the right corner, it talks about existing improvements. Um, we have to take um, test cores in the parking lot. Um, Vomith and Brush inspected the drainage. The drainage is as re was required, but the um, engineering section wants me to core the parking lot and take some samples of the curb because Mr. Grant um, did improve the parking lot area um, pretty consistent with the 2008 um, approval, but he <laughs> He didn't get inspection when he did that. So we're gonna have to um, get it to the point that engineering division accepts it. Um, they provided me the notes, it's on the plan, bottom, existing improvement notes, okay. bottom right. You have civic comment on this as well, I understand. You Pardon me? You, you reached out to Civic on this elevation modification? The the, there's a letter from the Civics in the, in the record. There's a letter from Civics in the record. They don't object to the um, the proposed renovation. Okay. I also have Peggy Kelly here, and I also have Michael Grant here, if you, if you okay. need Council to speak to either one of them. No, Mr. Chairman. The board have any questions? I uh, just, yeah, I, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Pete. Oh, this is Rick. Rick, oh, okay. I, I, a question. This, you said this came in two, I remember looking at um, this this project or, or a project for this site a uh, number of years ago. Um, that approval that they got, was that never constructed and this is what they wanted to construct back then? Um, the exterior improvements were, the improvements to the parking lot were constructed, but they were constructed without benefit of inspection by engineering. So I'm talking, I'm talking about the addition. No, the addition was not built. All right. So the addition that the board approved back in 2008 wasn't constructed. And at this time you wish to construct it. Yes, but the old site plan expired, so we couldn't do it. Okay, thank you. I I I, I remember seeing this. No. I didn't know if it was an addition on top of an addition no. of the one that you never built. But thank no. you. Okay. Lewis, you got a question? I have a question. Yes, this is Steve Lewis. Do we have uh, elevations? Sure. Proposed um, elevations. I I think they're available. We submitted them with. I could show them also, but I, I believe they're, you're going to be able to see them if they're on there. We submitted them digital. They are in the packet. Okay. Color color renderings also. Yeah, the color of, color of the building, the it's side loading. of the part. Oops, loading. it's loading. Time. Okay. Jeff, did you get a copy of the staff recommendations? Yes, the um, owner has reviewed them, and I've reviewed them. We have no objection to the recommendations. Oh, wrong one, sorry. <laughs> Don't you love technology? Uh, <laughs> what was that? That was the application that was on hold. I'm sorry. That wasn't color either. We <laughs> they were color. not color. And Jeff would give us color. We know that. <laughs> uh oh. No, just screen down. You'll get them. Is that it? I don't know. They'll come up. They just haven't popped up yet. There, there you go. we go. There we go. So that's White Hardy. Board. That's actually not the right, not the updated one. You guys got updated ones on Friday. Looks nice. All right. Pardon? They're in there. Uh, Peggy's telling me you have them. So it was White Hardy board with black shutters, with new shingle on uh, what charcoal shutter, char charcoal roof. White Azac. I don't know if we do have those. Could I, um, hang on a second. Can I open up something or does it not work that way? 
No, you haven't. You did submit the revised elevations to staff, though, correct, Jeff? Yes, yes. If, if, if I can show, I can, you know, if you allow me to open, but I don't know if this will. Joe, can you allow him to share? I'm going to stop share. Okay, so I'm going to be able to share. We think. Hang on a moment. Where am I? It's down here, squeeze chair. No pressure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, low, no pressure at all. This is one. Okay, that's the existing grant. Um, there's the color of the uh, roofing. That's your timberline sheet, um, timberline um, shingles. Uh, the river rock is the along the foundation, it's an Nantucket color. And then just simple white hardy board um, with black shutters. I'm looking to see if I have the main, the main um, view of this. Hang on a second. Which one is it right here, right? Mm -hmm. Or this one, this one. There you go. So black shutters, a little bit of um, architectural treatment up at the front. I don't see anything. Anybody see oh. it? No, no, we have no. a white screen. Maybe we got to wait. Hang on. Might be too big. The commissioners is like a race to see who can come in last. <laughs> were, were you able to see were you able to see the uh photographs i was showing previously yes okay yes. so this is just more memory you see if it's coming in nope see it yet no <laughs> mr chairman can we approve something that wasn't submitted or reviewed by anybody let's, else uh, let's, let's look at it let's give it time it's it's probably a lengthy uh Did you get a share before? File. Oh, hang on a minute. Load, I would imagine. Something's weird. Just a minute. No. Just give me a second, gentlemen. I actually think they have it. I mean, I know they have it. Where? Now we're going to try it again. Hang on. Lucky I have some technology whizzes here. See if this comes in. Does yeah, that show can... up? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Hey. Jeff, what's the date on that? What's this the date was submitted. What's the date? What's the date on the bottom of it? Okay, hang on. Of your document. Just a minute. 318. Can you see it or not? I can't, but I'll take your word for it. It's, okay. that's the well, it's right there. You see the elevator, okay. you don't see the timestamp. Hmm? You see it. Okay. okay. So okay. you can it's see it. It's just the colors were put on. The colors were put on. Okay, there's the river rock. There's your white hardy board, your black trim. And you should be able to see the date here, right here in the corner. Okay, so you're all able to see that, correct? Yes. Now Thank this you. does not show landscaping around it. There's landscaping around it, obviously. And, um, but that's how it would view from the road. I mean, there's street trees that are coming in here and there's some foundation plannings. Uh, Jeff, this is the actual files that were uploaded and given to the staff. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Michael Albano has them. Uh, Peggy confirmed that he has them this morning. Okay. okay. And the photographs that I was showing previously were filed also. After these. Yes. So Smith they have. That. So if we were to add a condition then that says subject to submission of elevation renderings prepared by Antoniad's architects last dated. What was that date? 318. We'd be good to add a number nine that said that. Fine. That's fine. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. I mean, we did submit them. I don't, they, they didn't make it in. Just so that the record is clear as to which plans we're talking about. Okay. 
There's actually two, if it matters, there's a 200 and a 100. You know. That doesn't matter if you use today's date or the 18th. It was submitted on the 18th. 18th. Well, the bottom, the date on the on on the drawing is is, is the 18th. 18th. That's okay. why I want to say. Yes. That's fine. Now you can see what I have on on the screen right now, right? Yes. yes. Okay, so that's the ADA access ramps. Okay. That's and the rear. That's the rear. That would be the west elevation. Okay. Are there any other questions by the board? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I, could I see the, uh, the, uh, have the, the um, planning board um, recommendations? I only have seven. I know there's eight now. Yeah, Would I just like to see to all of them. Sharing, so I can do that now. Okay, hang on. Look at that. And I'd like to know which of the uh, variants has been deleted. There were two originally. Yeah, it's only going to be 85855A, the front yard. The other one okay. we uh, were able to resolve that had already been taken care of. Okay, if I could just see the uh, eight recommendations. All right. Any other questions by the board? I have a motion. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to close this public hearing and place it on the decision calendar. This is Steve Walutis. Motion is closed by Mr. Walutis. Mr. Chairman, board member Pete Zarcone, and I'll second that motion. Second by Mr. Zarcone and Ms. Kelly. I vote aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. Mr. Thank Smith. you. Aye. Votes aye. Motion carries it. So thank you, Mr. Volner. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Good item number four, yeah, 1110 Halleck. No, I have no one here for number four. I'm going to try to bring the applicant in for number five. Okay. Is that Mr. Ricardo? I mean, I'm trying to get him in. I mean, I see him on the screen and I'm hitting the ask to unmute and the ask to start video, but I don't, I don't. Not having any luck getting him in. Can Michelle do it or does he have to do it? It looks like he's turning his video on now, but he still doesn't have his microphone on. I've asked him a couple times too. Here's the video. While we're waiting, I just want to mention that item number 11, Virginia Avenue, the land division will be heard on April 5th. All right. Um, are you unmuted? No, I'm unmuted. Okay, we can hear you. Oh, good. Okay. Thank God. I don't know what's going on with my computer here. All right, this here is an application. Uh, one, second. For, one second. Who am I speaking with? Peter Ricardo. Hey, Mr. Ricardo, can you raise your right hand, please? Yes. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. Okay, Mr. Ricardo. Uh, this here application is for a renovation of an existing Burger King on North Ocean Avenue. This here is a new concept plan that the Burger King has developed. It would probably be the first one in the state that looks like this. Uh, it's totally redone the interiors, the exterior, uh, some site improvements, and <clears throat> the amount of seating is the same. There's, there's no change in that. Uh, we will be doing some additional work on landscaping. Uh, we're going to be adding street trees along North Ocean Avenue and some additional bushes around the building itself. Uh, and if anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to try to answer them. Have you received a copy of the staff recommendations? Mr. Ricardo? I have not. Okay. They're up on the screen. Commissioner has them on the screen. Can you see them? 
Uh, I'm looking at my rendering. A rendering? Uh, the rendering of the Burger King. Yeah, it's still on my screen. You don't see the staff recommendations? I do not. Nothing's changing. It's uh, elevation and uh, the rendering. Yeah, well, does everybody see staff recommendations other than Mr. Ricardo? Yes. 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 All right, can I just read them quickly? Yes, please. Okay, number one, approval of plans, color renderings, and architectural plans prepared by yourself, dated 11921. Two, the existing dumpster and transformer enclosures shall be painted to match the proposed facade or shall receive the same facade treatment to match the facade change. Three, provide street trees with a minimum of four inch and an equal amount to 30 inch, uh, 30 foot, I can't read it, 30, 30 inch on foot. 30, 30 foot on foot. center from the preferred list in town code. Five, uh, four, provide ADA compliant parking, stall, striping, and signage. Five, if any new or altered exterior lighting is propo proposed, provide a lighting plan in compliance with the exterior lighting standards of town code. Six, obtain building permits and CO for all wall signs. Seven, this change of use determination shall expire three years from this date unless a building permit has been issued and substantial construction commenced in reliance thereon. And number eight, a CO shall not be issued until a written request for an inspection has been received by the planning division and a determination has been made that all the above conditions have been met. You, you understand those, Mr. Ricardo? I accept all those. There's not, okay. not an issue. Council, is anyone in the public on this application? Any board members have questions for Mr. Ricardo? Mr. Uh, Jim, it's Pete Zarcon. I have two questions. The first one has to do with the uh, facade. I see that they have the lettering up there. Is there any changes or anything needed for approval for the lettering? Well, um, we would need to make a sign, app a sign application for approval of that. Okay. Does the, current, does the current Burger King have that flame grilling since 1954 on it already or no? I'm not sure about that one. I don't think if it does, it's not in a location like that. It would be yeah, over the uh, canopy. Yeah, I didn't see it when I went yeah. by it. All right, and the other one would be, it's probably a, a minute point, but on number three, it's probably pretty well spelled out where you have uh, four inch trees with the 30 foot on center. I know on the rendering, that, on the plans that I saw, it showed six trees on there. Is there a need to put the amount of trees or just go with the 30 foot on site? They are, th those trees on the uh, uh, proposed site renovation are 30 foot on center. And there's about six of them. Is that what that is? Yes. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Any questions by the board? May I have a motion? No. Mr. Chairman, this is board member Pete Zarcon. I make a motion to close this public hearing and place the matter on the <clears throat> decision calendar. Proposed by Mr. Zarcon. Second. Uh, Mr. Chairman. Second by Ms. Kelly. Mr. Walutis. I vote aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. It's done. Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries six. <clears throat> uh, we haven't heard from anyone from number four yet. So when we get that, we'll make a date certain on that. I'd like to go back to item number one. Public storage at Mount Sinai. We're holding that to April 5th for additional elevation modifications. Item number two, West Funeral Home at Santa Riches. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve this application to modify the previously approved plan for 2,864 square foot, one story addition to an existing funeral home, including expansion of parking lot with staff recommendations one through four, last revised March, March 2nd, 2021, as covenants and conditions of the approval. Motion by Ms. Dunn. Second, Richard Second Smith. Smith. Mr. Zarcon. I vote aye. Ms. Kelly. Ms. Kelly. I vote aye. Mr. Walutis. I vote aye. I vote aye. Chair votes aye, motion carries 6-0. Item three, the Toritos at Santa Mauritius. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve this application to modify the previous approval for an addition to a restaurant with staff recommendations mm -hmm. one through six, 
last revised February 11th, 2021 as covenants and conditions of the approval. Motion by Ms. Dunn. Second, Richard Smith. Second, Mr. Smith, Mr. Zarko. I vote aye. Ms. Kelly. I vote. Mr. Walutis. Aye. aye. Mr. Smith. Uh, who did I miss? Smith. Mr. Zarcone. I went first. Oh, okay. <laughs> the chair votes aye. Motion carries 6-0. Item number four, I need a date certain. I guess that would be the April 5th meeting. Can I have a motion, please? Mr. Chairman, make a motion to hold this matter till the April 5th hearing. Is that Mr. Smith? Yes, Mr. Chairman. By Mr. Karen, Karen Dunn, I'll second that motion. Second by Ms. Dunn, Mr. Zarcon. I vote aye. Ms. Kelly. I vote aye. Mr. Walutis. Aye. Chair votes aye. Item number 41110, Halleck area be held on April 5th. Item number five, Burger King and Ocean Avenue. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, this is board member Pete Zarcon. I make a motion to approve this application with all staff comments, one through eight dated 310, uh, 21, uh, 2021 as covenants and conditions of the approval. Motion by Mr. Zarcon. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Patricia Kelly, I second that motion. Motion by Mr. Zarcon, second by Ms. Kelly, Mr. Walutis. I vote aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. Mr. Dunn. Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries 6 0. Item number six, the Church of St. Gerard Mahalia. Uh, it's, uh, Mr. Chairman, this is Richard Smith. Make a motion to approve the subject site plan revisions. With uh, condition, with uh, two conditions, staff recommendations number one and two, last revised March tenth, two thousand twenty-one, as uh, covenants and conditions of the approval. Motion by Mr. Smith. This is Karen Dunn. I'll second that motion. Second by Ms. Dunn. Mr. Zarcon. I vote aye. Ms. Kelly. I vote aye. Mr. Walutis. Aye. Mr. Smith. I get that. And chair votes aye. Motion carries six on. Item number seven, Colonial Youth at Mastic. Mr. Chairman, I would like to make a motion to approve this application to convert Knights of Columbus to daycare facility with staff recommendations one through nine, last revised 316 21 as covenants and conditions of the approval. Motion by Ms. Dunn. Second, Richard Second Smith. Mr. Smith, Mr. Zarcon. I vote aye. Ms. Kelly. I vote aye. Mr. Walutis. Aye. The chair votes aye. Motion carries 6 0. <clears throat> Item number eight, McDonald's Corporation at Manaville. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve this application to add a side by side drive through facade renovations, ADA, ADA upgrades with staff recommendations one through 11, last revised March 2nd, 2021, and one planning bid board variance 85-852 as covenants and conditions of the approval. Okay, motion by Ms. Dunn. Second, Richard Smith. Second by Mr. Smith, Mr. Zarcon. I vote aye. Kelvin. I vote aye. Mr. Walutis. Aye. Chair votes aye, motion carries 6-0. Item number nine is being held on May 3rd. Item number 10, Michael J. Grant Funeral Home at Quorum. Mr. Chairman, this is Steve Walutis. I make a motion to approve this application for the construction of a one-story addition of 1,518.17 square feet and 394.67 square feet basement uh, to the Grant Funeral Home, uh, subject to staff recommendations one through eight and an additional number, recommendation number nine to read contingent on uh, the rendering submitted on uh, 3 21 dated 3 21 also subject to one uh, planning board, board variance, which is number 85-855A as covenants and condition of the approval. Motion by Mr. Walutis. Uh, this is board member Pete Zarcon, and I will second that motion. Second by Mr. Zarcon, mm -hmm. Ms. Kelly. I vote aye. Mr. Smith? Aye. Ms. Dunn? Aye. Chair votes aye. Motion carries 6 0. 
item number 11 is being held on April 5th on a decision count the PK medals at form. Uh, Mr. Chairman, this is Steve Walutis. Do we need Secra on this? I'm not sure. That's a good question. I don't have it on my paper, but uh, Council? I don't, I don't think so. I don't have it on, on my I don't sheet. Have it. Or, um, okay. No. Okay, then I, I make an application to approve the site plan uh, for the uh, improvements to the existing PK metal recycling uh, and scrap metal facility. Can uh, I, I'm sorry for interrupting, Mr. Baloudis, but Sikra. we do need Sequa. Okay. No. Sorry, I don't know. Okay. okay. So first of all, I make an application for a negative declaration as to Sequa. Motion for a negative deck by Mr. Baloudis. This board member Pete Zarcon, I'll second that motion. Second by Mr. Zarcon, Ms. Kelly. Uh, I recused myself from this application originally. Mr. Smith? Aye. Ms. Dunn? Aye. Aye. Motion carries 6 0 for C. 5 0, isn't it? Mr. Chairman, 5 0. Does she recuse herself? I recuse myself? No, no, Pat. Pat Kelly? Oh, I didn't hear her. I did. You so it's 5 0 and eight. one recusal. 5 0 1. Yeah. Okay, so the motion is five to uh, oh against with one abstention or recusal being Miss Kelly. Can I have a motion? Yes, I have a further motion, Mr. Chairman. I move to approve this site plan uh, improvements to the existing PK metals recycling and scrap metal facility uh, with 2,500, 594 square foot of existing offices, uh, receiving storage, mechanics, and welding shop and 3,872 square feet of existing uh, machinery storage and processing uh, along with uh, uh, subject to staff recommendations one through 12, last dated March 4th, 2021, and also uh, with the following uh, special permits. Planning board special permit number 85-864.K and five a planning board uh, land development variances, which I'll read 85-843.A.4, 85.843.B, 85.843.A, 85 85 85 85.843.8.2.C, 85-843.8.3, and also a planning board Parking variance 85-852 and 85-85J, and also a planning board special permit 85-869K, uh, as 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 uh, covenants and conditions of the approval. Excuse me, Mr. Uh, Lotus. Yeah, I think the last parking variance was 85-855. Right, and then right. it wasn't A; it was B. It was. On the third one down, I think you missed number two. It's 85-843.B.2.C. I don't think you put the B in there. All right, so let's put that into the, uh, into the uh, recommendation. And the staff recommendations, there's 11 of them, and they're last dated 3821. I have them up on the screen. Um, so that's the motion you're making, right, Mr. Walutis? What's up on the screen and all those variances there? Let me look. Hold on. Yes, that's the application I'm making. Okay, so that's your motion. That's I my motion. I have a motion by Mr. Walutis. And this is board member Pete Zarcone. I'll second that motion. Second by Mr. Zarcone. Ms. Kelly? She's abstaining. She has to say it. All right. Ms. Kelly? I've accused myself. Yeah. yeah. I, I, like pulling teeth. Are you upset? Go ahead, Mr. Chairman. Are... Mr. Smith? Aye. It's done. Aye. The chair votes aye. Motion carries 5 0 with Miss Kelly abstaining. Uh, 520 William Floyd at Shirley is staying on a decision mm -hmm. calendar. Did the U Haul Lizier so yet? Item number 14 U Haul. Staying on the decision calendar. Are we still waiting on the BZA approval? Yes. Yet? We are. 
there anything the board would like to discuss before we adjourn? Not at this time, Mr. Chairman. Okay, I have a motion to adjourn. Chairman, this is board member Pete Zarcone. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn by Mr. Zarcone, Ms. Kelly. I'll second I that second motion, motion, Mr. Chairman. Second by Ms. Kelly, Mr. Maludis. Aye. Mr. Smith. Aye. Ms. Dunn. Aye. Chair votes aye, meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.